Greetings, people of the internet. I'm Scott with CircWorks Art Lab. Welcome once again to the underground laboratory where we create robots, aliens, zombies, and other imminent threats to humanity. And we create comics. We are creating comics for 100 days straight as part of the 100 Days of Making Comics Challenge. And what that is, that's where you take at least 30 minutes a day every day to work on your own personal comic book project. So that, that means whatever for people with busy schedules, whatever time you can find, but it's got to be 30 minutes. You can find 30 minutes to do in a day. I'm sure of it. So you find 30 minutes for every day for 100 days straight and you work on your comic. And by the end of those 100 days, you've made some progress. So it's a cool thing. And I would suggest if you're a comic book creator, if you're thinking about being a comic creator, I would jump up on that. Um, so what... Uh, What's, what's today's date? We are today, how many days have we been doing this? Yesterday was day 20, so that means today is day 21. Day 21, ladies and gentlemen, so we're gonna write that on the pad. Just, just to mark our progress where we are in this challenge. Now, talking about creating comics, I get a lot of questions. What, what do you use to create comics? Well, the good thing is to create comics, printing comics, you don't need a lot of fancy, uh, equipment or tools or anything like that. Now you can, if you're working digitally, you can use whatever software you use. I'm trying to learn Manga Studio. That is very cool, but you can do it traditionally too. And a lot of the supplies aren't really that expensive. You can use pretty much anything. Um, so don't get too discouraged by some of the tools and things that I use that I'm going to show you. They're not really that pricey. Some of the things can be, but that's not that important. It's just that you get the work done. You have fun doing it. So I'm going to show you what I use traditionally. And like I said, we can we're gonna try to do some of this stuff digitally. But as far as traditional tools, I'm gonna show you what I use. The first thing I want to talk about is the paper. I use I've been using either Strathmore, this is Strathmore here. Uh, I also use Canson Bristol uh, 11 by 17. These are pre-ruled, which means they have the lines and everything on it, so you know where to where to draw. But they have they have these, uh, so they're not pre-ruled, and you can rule them yourself or whatever. But it's 11 by 17 size. That's the size I use. Uh, this is standard American shrunk when you shrink it down to standard American comics. Um, but if you want to, if you do manga or whatever, you can use whatever format you want. Or you know, it, there's really no if you're doing independent comics, there's really no set way to do it. So that, but that's that's what I use. That's that's what I use and what I'm comfortable with. Um, and so yeah, it'll get reduced down to this. This is my comic, by the way. Just a little quick segue because I forgot to do that earlier. This is Young and the Dead. This, these are the first three issues. I'm working on issue four, but this is issue one through three of Young and the Dead. It's a kids versus zombie story. It takes place in the 80s. It's about a bunch of kids fighting in the zombie apocalypse. So lots of fun. Now, so you got your paper, and if if the, I mean these can run. If you go to if you go to like a Michaels or something, they're having a sale. You can get a pretty good deal on it. Some, I forgot exactly how much a pad of this costs. Maybe 20, but if you get that 50% off or that 40% off, you can bring that down. So look out for those deals. Um, I use uh, to pencil. I use uh, non-photo blue pencils. So these are these. It's like a light blue pencil. So when you scan it in. I mean, nowadays, you can, if you use Photoshop, you can pretty much use any color and then kind of zap it out, you know, using channels and everything in Photoshop. We're not going to talk about that today. But, um, but typically, these don't photograph. And uh, I don't know, I like them because I don't have to do a lot of erasing and everything, but these are the Cola Race brand, Prismacolor. Um, they're erasable to a certain extent, not, you know, they're not as erasable as like a regular lead pencil, but I like to use these. Um, but my favorite tool when I'm penciling, and this is the one I use a lot, um, is these turquoise, again, Prismacolor, non-photo blue. These are a little harder to come by. You can find them online. Um, if I can remember, I'll leave links to these. And so where you can find them on Amazon and everything, but um, and these are getting harder to come by. So I try to stock up, stock up on these. But you need a special pencil. You need a lead holder. So this is a little bit of an investment. You also need a special pencil sharpener, and it's 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 different. It's uh, it kind of winds around. Um, but this is what we used to do. I used to work at a company doing architectural renderings, and uh, and that's what they use. So I kind of got used to it. But I, I since then I found a lot of other artists use these same tools. But it's it's you just stick this in here and you wind it around, and it will actually sharpen it. It's 
don't ask me how it works. There's a little grinder thing and it spins it around that grinder and it gets a really nice sharp point. So that's my favorite tool, but you can use whatever you want. These, you know, these, if you want to use regular pencils, Ticonderoga is a really good brand, but whatever you want to use. But that, this is just telling you what I use because I get questions on this. Um, if I need to white things out, I use Pro White or lately I've been using these for smaller areas. These are the Uniball Sino white gel pens and these are good for little adding little stars and things like that or little tiny corrections. Or like I said, I don't have any with me right now, but I also use Pro White, which is almost, it's just like a, like a thick white paint that you can use to make corrections and things like that. So for inking, I use, I've been using Speedball. That's the brand. It's, it's pretty nice. It's pretty, got a really dark, rich black. I like this a lot. Now, I also use, uh, what is it? It's a, it's a manga ink. It's a, uh, what, what is it? A Deleter Black number five. Now I do that when I'm doing anything where I use markers because it doesn't tend to bleed. Um, but for comics, that again, that Deleter Black, it's, it's a Japanese ink, so it's hard to get here in the States. It's not hard to get, but, but you know, you have to order. It takes a little while. So sometimes I'll run out or whatever. So I don't always have it. But if I'm, if I'm, if I know in advance that I'm not planning on, um, doing any coloring like on the page I'll do you know I'll do shading whatever digitally but if if I'm not doing any if I'm not planning to do any coloring on the page I use uh, this uh, speedball super black so that's what I use um, for for a brush I use a Winsor Newton series 7 this is a I believe this is a number one uh, I also use Cotman, uh, which are also, I think they're by Winsor Newton as well, but they're a watercolor brush, they're so a little more economical. These, these ones can tend to get a little expensive, um, but you know, I know a lot of people who use these things, Microns, and I use them too, you can't really get line weight, but there's, there's a lot of other, like there's pocket brush pens and things like that that work great for inking. So whatever works, whatever you want to use to get your, your ink down on the page. Now I do use the Microns for like straight lines and things. So it's a good idea to have a ruler for that. And also these things here, you want to have some, some circle templates. Um, and then some, uh, you also want, if you can, some ellipse templates. And if you're working digitally, this, it's a lot easier to do this stuff digitally because you can go and you can use your tools to create that relatively, you know, easy. So, um, but if you're working traditionally, these are kind of a must depending on what you're doing. You know, if you're, if you don't have any technical stuff at all, if like you're, well, even, I would think even if you're doing like a sword and sorcery that's out and there's not a lot of buildings and things, there's still circles like shields and things like that. So those can definitely come in handy, but really that's, and you know, as far as erasers, I, I'm not real particular about eraser. Sometimes I use a kneaded eraser, but sometimes I use these little magic erasers. Um, but yeah, those are the tools I use to create my comic book. So uh, if, you, if you're curious, now you know. But uh, let's see what's going on with the progress of that comic book. We're going to go to the Parallelscope where we can view alternate realities, where we can see the progress of Young and the Dead already in process. Let's get to it. Hey everyone, uh, so I'm on my drive to work today. I usually, what I try to do is I, I'm trying to get my 30 minutes a day done at work on my lunch. So I usually take about an hour for lunch. So I'll just eat my lunch. I'm on that crazy diet. So it's, you know, it's usually like a smoothie or something. And then I'll, uh, I'll do my, uh, do my, usually do, hopefully do 30 minutes, maybe a little more, just depending. Um, so it's kind of a good time. It's kind of good to have a set time to try to do that. I can't, I can't do everything there just because I don't have my art desk and stuff. I mean, I do have, I do have a nice desk and I've got art supplies and stuff there that I can use. You know, the, like some of the computer software, I've got the Adobe suite. I don't have, I don't have Manga Studio over there. Um, but anyway, so that's what I've been trying to do. So anyway, so this drive to work, it's kind of a, it's kind of a long drive. It's actually, well, it's about 35 minutes, which comparatively to some places, um, maybe not as long, but I guess what I mean by long is that I take the long way. Um, I can kind of go through town, but it'll take me a lot longer. So I kind of go out of my way um, but I'm basically this route I'm taking. It's all just desert. There's really not a whole lot out here um, But it's kind of pretty because it's a desert and the one thing that's kind of cool is that I always had these this view of um, Of like hot air balloons because because it's out here kind of in the middle of nowhere um, This is the route that all the hot air balloon companies take and so it's kind of cool to see the balloons out and everything like that um, 
and I've never I've never been in a hot air balloon. I've uh, I've done a lot of cool things. I've I've skydived. I've um, zip lined. I've rappelled down like waterfalls and uh, parasailed all that stuff. But I've never I've never done a hot air balloon. Um, and I had a chance to do it. I uh, I did some logo work for a company a while back, and. Um, and I tried to, you know, it was in exchange for a hot air balloon ride. I'm like, that's cool, you know. You know me, I'm like all about not doing work for free, but I'm all about doing work for the trade out if it's if it's worth it, you know, if it's if it's a good trade and it's fair for everyone. But anyway, so so I had a I had a free hot air balloon ride for two, and I tried to I tried to go twice, and I got rained out. And in Arizona, I mean, that's that's kind of it doesn't rain a lot here, so it was just kind of bad luck. And then, you know, after that, I just I I didn't really follow up, and I kind of lost touch with that client and everything. So, who knows? Someday, maybe I'll get a chance to do a hot air balloon ride, but we'll see. Something I'd want to do. Something I'd I've always kind of wanted to check out. All right, hey, I got something to show you guys. What I have in my hot little hands is the finished script for Young and the Dead. You see that? Issue four, draft one. So it is done. Now, invariably what I'm gonna do is I'll probably go in and tweak some dialogue here and there, but it, it is, for all intents and purposes, it's ready to go on to actually so I can start thumbnailing and drawing and doing everything. The dialogue, I don't put that in until the end anyway, so I can tweak little things here and there, and I've done that with every single issue up until this one anyway. Um, so this, this, this particular story, this time around, it's sort of a pivotal time in the series. It's where we're... This is like the halfway point, so, um, or I guess the third would end the halfway because I'm thinking it's going to go six issues. Um, but this issue, things start to kind of fall in place and you see where, hopefully you see where things are going. Um, because characters split up before and there's other characters you're like, well, how does this character come into play and all this type of stuff. So, so everything is there's some turning points here and hopefully things will start coming together as we move towards a certain destination um now this issue is going to be a little different also because uh when i talk about dialogue and stuff people have accused me before of being a little dialogue heavy and i've got you know when you read one of my books there's a lot of panels a lot of word balloons um this one is a little less of that and it's by design i mean there's there's a little more action in this story and there was Previous to that, there were some things that I had to explain, exposition and stuff, and I've got some of that out there. And there's still going to be some some things that I, I kind of need to explain, especially, I think, in the next issue and the final issue as well. But for this issue, um, it's going to be a lot of action. There's not going to be, I mean, it's it'll probably be a quicker read than the other ones, because I think, but it's a little faster pace. So, but I'm digging up. I'm liking where it's going, and there's some cool scenes in here, and it should uh, it should help further the story along, and uh, so I'm happy with it. But anyway, yeah, it is uh, the script is done. Okay, we are moving along. Day 20, or 21. I'm sorry. Day 21 is completed. And I'll see you guys tomorrow for day 22. Hey everyone, you've seen the process, now you can check out the story. Issues 1 through 3 of Young and the Dead are available at my website at cirqueworks.com. Also follow me on social media at the links listed below. Subscribe and check out some of the other videos in this series. There's much more to come.